Making and using masks in Paint Shop Pro is quite easy and there are so many options for you to choose from when it comes to images to convert to masks. Um, if you see maybe a quote somewhere that you love but you can't find a font for, you could convert that quote into a mask and use it that way. Uh, picture frames, do the same with them. You can make your own frame with maybe little flowers, vines, even lace and convert that into a mask to be used time and time again. Today I'm going to make a mask with my little retro image here. Um, I start by going to image, coming on down to split channel and split to RGB. What I want to do is find the strongest contrasting image to use to make my mask because the stronger the contrast, the clearer the mask. So, this I could enhance even more by going to brightness and contrast. And there we go, that looks like a really good base for our mask. Now we save that by going to File, Save As. We browse to Documents folder, My PSP Files, Masks, and I put all of my new files into my Extras folder, so Extra Masks, and we'll name it Retro and save it as a JPG file. Now, I shall open an image down here and we'll try out our new mask. Uh, you can use a mask from your image that's already open or you can go to Layers, Load Save Mask on Disk where we just saved it to. Browse to your newly saved retro mask, open it now, the black background will become transparent. All of your white and variations become your solid colours. So having invert transparency checked is what we need for this mask. Load. And over in your layers palette, right click and merge group. And there you have your mask. Saved and used and also very, very easy. I've found another use for a mask and I also thought this was really neat and something a little bit different to do with the mask. Once again we have to make a mask from our lady here because I'm wanting to remove that white background and this is a way that I can do that and still maintain her lovely wispy hair which I so don't like drawing back in. That one doesn't look too bad, that might be our choice. So we close that one and close this one also. Uh, we can try our brightness and contrast. Yep, that looks pretty good. But with this one, because we want to maintain all of her features, we have to go a step further. So we're going to black out all of that to get the contrast and maintain our lovely lady when we use this as a mask on her. Selection tool, freehand and feather. And keep it at add shift so that you can stop if you've not got a steady hand as I don't have. You can stop every so often and then continue on. And if you make a mistake you can always then just click to edit and undo. I'm going to black them out completely and to do that I have to select around her so that I can add a new layer and then fill it in with black. It doesn't really matter how you select it just so long as you get all of her selected and with having add shift in the selections box up top it means that we can just stop and start as we wish. And that's just what I'm doing. Now add a new layer and plug fill that with the black. Selections none and merge visible. Now I'm not going to save this one because I probably never use it again. So this time we'll do our mask from the image that we have open on our window here. So layers and new mask layer from image 
and we have to select blue 29. We need to invert the mask because we want to swap from black to white and vice versa. And merge group. And there you are, you have your little lady, no background, wispy hair and fairly easy to do too. Hope you enjoyed learning a couple of new things to do with masks.